Welcome back to theCUBE, guys and girls. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Day two of our coverage of Snowflake Summit. Oh, did you hear that applause? They're pretty stoked to be here. theCUBE is stoked to be here. Dave, we're going to have a great conversation about media entertainment advertising, the media data cloud, and we have a great use case with LiveRamp here. Media is a great topic, Lisa. It is a great topic. It is, everyone can be interested in it. We've got two alumni back with us. Phil Stratton is here, the global head of media, entertainment, and advertising at Snowflake. And Lisa Kramer joins us, the head of embedded products at LiveRamp. Great to have both of you. Great Thank to you be here. Thank you for having us. I always love it when there's two Lisas on the cube. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill, you, you were, before we went live, you were talking about your crazy travel schedule, but I'm, I'm sort of jealous. London, Paris, Cannes, the Cannes, what is it called? The Festival of Festival Creati of Creativity. Talk about that. Just wrapped last Friday. Talks about the future of advertising. Something I know that you guys are both whirling, we're working on. Talk to us about that festival and sure. what are some of the break, groundbreaking things coming in advertising? Absolutely. So, you know, the the Can um, event coming after the film festival really started a few years ago as a creative festival, um, hence the name. And then in the last five, six, seven years, it's become also part of a data and technology elements to, to Can as well. And so, it's truly a global gathering of creative professionals, media professionals, and technology companies like LiveRamp and, and Snowflake. And it doesn't stink being on the Caribbean right there in the, <laughs> in the south of France. No, I, so that's why I don't feel too bad that you haven't been home in two weeks. But I am happy for you that you get to go home tomorrow. Exactly. Lisa, talk to us a little bit about LiveRamp, give the audience just that overview in case they're not familiar, and then what is your involvement in the Cannes Festival and, and media and advertising? Sure. Well, LiveRamp enables our clients to safely and effectively connect data. And we do so across a number of capabilities. So uh, the first is identity resolution based on our um, identity graph that allows our clients to um, connect fragmented consumer touch points to the best representation of a person or a household. Additionally, we allow for flexible collaboration. So the ability to take that view of your customer base and connect it with other trusted parties. And then finally, we enable um, activation into our ecosystem, which is um, has a vast network of partners across uh, marketing and, and media destinations, and all of that is possible on our pseudonymous identifier, the RAMP ID. Um, yeah, we had a, a present, presence in Cannes as well, and I think um, there were a couple trends uh, that you know were kind of bubbling up uh, from conversations, um, and I can point to a couple of them. But Bill would love to hear your thoughts as well. Um, you know, some of the key things that that we've been seeing is, you know, with increased privacy regulations and decreased device signals, these are things that have been happening for a long time. But additionally, you you have kind of with economic pressure at the moment, marketers are tasked to do more with less. And so I think Bill was mentioning kind of um, technology platforms are also um, you know, big in the space now because marketers are trying to optimize their workflows and they're really looking for ways uh, to simplify what they're doing so that you can get kind of better insights and a richer view of customer data. And you guys are one of the, early on, bringing your identity infrastructure to the native application framework and it, and you That's deliver correct. a SaaS product, correct? We talked about this last year. Yeah. So, we heard some announcements this week. Um, what's evolved since the last time we talked? Absolutely. Well, we've been working with Snowflake for a while now, as, as you know, and um, so last year we, we announced our, our capabilities within the native application framework, and over, over the, pre the past year or so, we've evolved those capabilities. So now our full identity resolution capabilities are live and available within the native application framework, so you can resolve across all of the consumer touch points to that ramp ID, and that's really important in terms of being able to get that accurate view of the consumer. Additionally, we've worked to decrease time to value for our customers so that they can um, resolve that data, get those insights in Snowflake, but then immediately the marketing team can have access in our UI to further segment and activate into the ecosystem. And so there's been a ton of progress over the past year or so, and we're really excited about the partnership with Snowflake and enabling these use cases together. 
So what's happened in the macro of, of advertising? You know, yeah. Facebook was the year of austerity until AI came about, and Google freaked out when OpenAI or Code Red, uh, but the consumer keep spending, so there's, you have this kind of interesting ebb and flow. People yeah. have jobs, they have money, they spend. Yeah, 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 it's interesting. I mean, advertising, Dave, as you know, sort of replicates the economy in some ways, right? And sometimes it leads into, you see the impact of a recessionary economy in advertising, and then sometimes you also see, coming out of that kind of climate, advertising is a leading indicator, to your point. I think um, you know, most of the big things that are happening around advertising is what Lisa touched on, which is collaborating between marketers and agencies and media companies is really what's starting to take effect. Because you know, it's so important, as Lisa indicated, that marketers are able to know who they're reaching, okay, with their marketing campaigns, and then actually measure that appropriately. And those things, years ago, required copy and movement of data everywhere. And now with Snowflake, and in the example with LiveRamp is, the data never has to move. If you're doing identity resolution and you're a marketer, your data stays in Snowflake, they run a native application from LiveRamp, you augment your data, and then you go off and create a campaign without physically moving any of your data. And then you measure that on the back end. And so that's improving privacy, it's improving the performance of campaigns, and it's also giving attribution and measurement to brands and advertisers. And so the, the business case when you pitch a customer, is break it down into the economics. What, what's the, the real value for them? How do they get the ROI? Absolutely, so once you get that consistent identity framework, you have a view into customer data around the person or the household, and that view creates some really rich insights um, that can then kind of be activated into the ecosystem to ensure you're reaching the right person at the right time, and so um, these, these aren't necessarily new concepts, right? It's, it's, it's trying to understand how to optimize campaign spend as it's running um, and really reduce media waste. And so identity resolution helps to deliver against that. And then additionally, now that you're able to take exposure-based data and resolve that in your Snowflake environment through our native app capabilities, you can understand what's happening and, and then take immediate action um, through our our activation um, capabilities as well. So really closing the loop there to, to um, uh, enable that ROI. Can you get, this is maybe off the wall question, but you know how There's Snowflake. such thing as off the wall so, Okay, so Snowflake's <laughs> adding all these data types, right? I got rows, I got columns, yeah. I got OLAP, analytics, I got transactions. As a, as a consumer, you're researching, ah, I'm gonna, I need to buy a new dishwasher. Okay, so great, I get inundated with all these ads, and then I buy the dishwasher and I keep getting inundated with all these yeah. ads. Can you solve right. that problem? Yeah, absolutely. Because that's mean, waste. Yeah. Yes, right? exactly. You're, you're, yeah, I mean, and you, it causes churn. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't have had a better example. I mean, it, prior to that, you didn't have the granularity of data to understand that you had already made the purchase. And, and why is that? Because that point of sale data went into some other data silo, but the ad exposures were in a different silo. So, and they weren't talking to each other, so you bought a product but you were still getting advertising for it. And so now with Snowflake, those two environments are the same. And so as soon as you make that purchase, you connect the data sets easily, and then therefore it's a better consumer experience. Onto right? the washing like, machine. It, you know, we, we, <laughs> exactly. we're all yeah. consumers, yeah. and, and yeah, that's yeah. the experience <laughs> that we all want. Well, and that's no longer a nice to have for businesses, you know, right. because we talked about you know, customer churn or customers going, I, I already have this, I want you to show me what's next best, relevant to me, I want a personalized experience. We have this expectation that we can just get that anywhere we are, and so it's really no longer a nice to have for any business, whether you're in media advertising or even some retail. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, and Lisa can jump in here, Lisa one and two, I guess, <laughs> one and two. <laughs> Lisa one, to your point is, um, consumers expect and demand more, and we want to meet them where they are. And so their expectation for that experience is something that we all want to provide as an industry, and we're collaborating in order to provide that, right? And we want that high expectation for consumers. Yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, I think identity is kind of the foundation for all of this. Um, so being able to do so by breaking down the silos and having all of that data available, but then also being able to connect it in a meaningful way. Um, we've all had poor experiences from digital ads, right, and you, and you continue to see something. Um, and so being able to connect that data uh, with identity resolution can help solve that problem. So and that same connectivity, Dave, real quick is, it's not just digital advertising on a website or a mobile app, this is connected television, right? These are addressable advertising in a streaming program, and so that that connectivity is now coming to a 30 second ad, not just a banner on a website. What, what, because of because of cord cutting? Or, well, uh, so cord cutting is happening and that is then requiring customers and consumers to sign up for a streaming service. The media company, HBO Max or Disney, then has streaming subscriber data that then they can privacy protect and then offer that ad experience in a connected television environment. Those are the kinds of things that is happening in our industry. So, because of there's a, Bill, you were saying there's, a, there's an alignment between consumer spending and, and advertising. I was listening to the, the central bankers this morning talk about, you know, we, we got to get inflation down, but you know, yeah. employment, there's no unemployment. So presumably that's a good thing for advertising. So how closely do you, do you watch these trends? A lot of companies will say, like Warren Buffett, I don't pay attention to any of that, but it's really relevant to your business, isn't it? Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah, I think um, you know it, it certainly is, and marketers are being tasked to do more with less, um, right? And so they they certainly are feeling that, and and kind of evaluating how to optimize spend. Um, and so I think um, certainly it's something that that we look at. Um, however, you know, identity resolution and getting that view of the consumer is valuable, and and marketers also understand um, that concept as well. And it helps make marketing, marketing scientific, which as a marketer I love. You get to marry the creativity with the data part and really be able to deliver, understand things in almost probably near real time, make changes and really delight the customer, which is of course what we all yeah. have the expectation that is going to happen. Yeah, it's happening, there's no question, and we all see it because we're all consumers, but marrying data capability to allow creative you know, um, advancements um, versioning advertising, not just delivering to the right time, the right person, but the right creative in the right setting yeah. are all things that are going to improve that performance. How about intent data? Yeah. Where, where does that, uh, what's the state of intent data these days? How can Snowflake help live ramp and your customers improve your buying intentions and targeting? Yeah, well first of all, I'll go first and then Lisa, intent data is happening all around us, right? I mean, there's all kinds of intent signals that consumers have. The real key to your question, I think, is how do you take an intent signal and understand that it's valid? Right? Just because you, know, you visited a location of a hotel doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to buy property there. So how do you separate the noise of intent to the actual you know, purpose of that? And I think the identity components of LiveRamp do that. They're removing the noise and capturing that intent signal appropriately. Yeah. Certainly, I mean, I think the um, identity resolution capabilities help our clients understand more about the consumer. So like on average, a US adult has two to three different emails they use based on context. And so to your point, I could be giving an email over here to the brand and then also a different email based on what's presented to me to that same brand. And so identity resolution helps our clients stitch all of that together across that complex customer journey. Can you, can you capture the delta between, you said no dumb questions. Can you capture the delta between like top of funnel content and like lower level? I'm thinking like yeah. I used a dishwasher before. I would never read a review of a dishwasher yeah. unless I were going to buy a dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But, it, it, but, but you know, at a top level somebody you know, might say, oh well that's a false positive. So, yeah, yeah. So, can you get to that level of, of detail? I, I think you hit, I don't know what, uh, you must be reading marketing journals, Dave, in your spare time because you're asking <laughs> the best questions. <laughs> okay, okay, good, I'm and, glad to hear um, that. I think that um, 
combining upper funnel, mm -hmm. okay, which in some cases is just a, a brand that advertises. Let's say it's Coca-Cola that spends a lot of money just on branding, right? There's, you know, 40% of the world drinks Coca-Cola every day, whatever the statistics are. Um, but how do you then marry upper funnel um, you know, engagement, I just saw a communication for a soft drink, to lower funnel purchase, okay? And if you can take the purchase data that you might have from a bottler, let's say with Coca-Cola, region specific, you know, time of day, all kinds of granular data, then you can do exactly what you just said, is you're marrying upper funnel, which everybody will still spend money with upper funnel advertising, it's important, but then I can connect it to the lower funnel activity. Yeah, keep the pipeline going with upper funnel. It, it's always both, I mean, brands sometimes, and I think people have been through this cycle, if you only focus on lower funnel, and you ignore sort of the bigger branding exercise, then you get to yourself where you're a race to the bottom, versus you're always looking for new consumers and fans and customers. So they work in tandem. So that full spectrum is the best, exactly. best practice. Yeah. Okay, that makes right, sense. Right, and really nurturing through that funnel to get the conversions that drive the profitability and the revenue of the organization. The California DMV really could use your help, by the way. They're terrible with <laughs> advertising. <laughs> I'm like, I've already paid my registration. <laughs> they don't seem to know. What are some of the, the next trends that you're seeing in, in media and advertising that are exciting? Obviously, we've been talking a lot about Gen AI and LLMs here the last couple of days, but what do you see in that crystal ball, Bill? Sure, I can go first. Um, you know, I think that um, you know, the, the AI area, and we've been doing optimization, as Lisa said earlier, and machine learning for quite a while in advertising. The good news is advertising has a closed loop system. And anytime you often have a closed loop system, you can optimize. But um, part of what AI and generative AI is doing is simplifying, okay, a complex set of technologies, okay? So if I can start to simplify the task of setting up a data clean room in Snowflake, then all of a sudden I've opened up the opportunity for a marketer who might not have the technology skill sets, right, that, that have cloud understanding because the AI assistant is helping them establish Snowflake and a complex set of tasks. So I think one of the biggest trends is the simplification for everyone to be data driven and you don't need a data engineering expertise to do that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I would echo exactly what you just said. I mean, I think with the advances that we're seeing, kind of all brands can have access to this, you know, um, new technology across AI. So it really kind of democratizes what's possible. And, and brands that maybe didn't have resources before to build complex measurement models, you know, potentially can do so moving forward with, with the capabilities that, that are coming up. There's got to be some interesting conversations going on around ChatGPT and the impact in the Google code. Right? I mean, I, I know I personally spend more time now. I spent, used to spend zero time on ChatGPT. Now we spend more time. It sure. definitely takes away from time I have to spend searching. Yeah. You know, now to, and and ChatGPT is far more uh, traffic right now anyway than, than Bard. So not to say that Google couldn't reverse that, but yeah. there must have been some interesting conversations going on in, the, in your circles in this yeah. topic. Right? Well listen, I mean, you know, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, those companies, they're not just in the technology business, they're also in the advertising business, right? And so um, they, they have businesses that can support their AI efforts, right? And that's valuable, right? Very important. From a Snowflake standpoint, we don't sell advertising, right, like those companies. We, we are an independent sort of, of technology to that ecosystem. So it does make for interesting conversations, right? Um, but we also think that foundationally data that customers own that are in Snowflake about their consumers is a valuable asset that's going to drive generative AI and other things. And so that's the direction that we're going in, especially in advertising. Exciting time. Definitely. I'm trying to hook you guys on that. What's, because, no, because, you th <laughs> I mean, this is to me a fascinating conversation because Google came out of nowhere. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, nobody saw that coming. They thought it was a stupid business plan and then yeah. all of a sudden it became the number one advertising yeah. platform. And then, and so, okay, so you could, you could monetize ChatGPT with, 
SaaS license, you could maybe do ads, and, but you know, Google Ads now, it's, the first page is all ads. So it, it, I, I'm expecting, yeah. who knows, if we knew the answer to it, we'd start a company. Yeah. But there's going to be some kind of new disruptive model that comes out of this, and, and advertising is never going to go away. That's, That's right. It's a great industry. Yeah. And it's just, it just seems like generative AI and what we've seen with the magic of you know, ChatGPT has the potential to really yeah. disrupt the way we reach consumers. I think just to your point is, um, you know, Google's phenomenal technology, but it wasn't until they actually applied a business model with advertising to it that it became very expansive. And so I think where yeah. we are right now in things like ChatGPT are we're still working through what the business models might be and yeah, the absolutely. applications. And I think there we're going to see tremendous innovation. Yeah. Yep, counting on it, tremendous innovation. Bill, Lisa, thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE, sharing with us thank what's you. going on in media advertising, how LiveRamp and Snowflake are working together, and what you're enabling marketers to do, and all sorts of great companies. Thank you, we appreciate your time. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. Our pleasure. Yeah. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. Up next, the CEO of Skyflow, one of our alumni joins us. Going to be talking about data privacy, data residency, and secure GPT. You can find all of our Snowflake content on thecube.net, all of our cube content on thecube.net, our analysis and editorial content on siliconangle.com. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.